Hi guys, and welcome back to Beauty Within. It's your host, Felicia. And Rowena. So today we're gonna be revisiting what gentle cleansers are because in our skincare basics series that we started almost a year ago, <laughs> we started with step one of the skincare routine, which is cleansers. And we all know cleansing is probably the most important skincare step in our routine because it gets off all that nasty, all that grime, all that oil, and it sets the base for all the other products that come on to really be able to sink through our skin. Yes, but since there's so many different types of gentle cleansers today, we can't help but wonder what gentle cleanser best fits my skin type. Don't worry fam, we got you. So today we're here to give you a cleansing 101 part two, gentle cleansing edition. And even like help you define what is a gentle cleanser. Yes. Because as we know, skincare varies from person to person, skin type to skin type. And of course we'll be mentioning, like we have here as well, some of our favorite and what we deem our favorite gentle cleansers. And we know you guys love, and we love the fresh soy cleanser for a really long time. And they're actually coming out with a really exciting campaign that we're actually a in. part of. <laughs> so we'll be sharing with you guys some of the behind the scenes of the photo shoot and the filming and the yeah. videos that we had, it was so fun. We had a lot of soy cleanser on us. Yes, the <laughs> smell just reminds me of that day. Yes! yes. What defines a gentle cleanser? Like with most skincare products, it does vary from person to person, but generally they refer to cleansers that are made without irritating ingredients that don't leave the skin feeling stripped, tight, or dried out. And once again, this will differ for different people depending on your skin type and specific ingredients that may irritate you, but maybe not other people. Then texture-wise, gentle cleansers can generally be the ones that come in a gel, milky, and cream consistency that's lightweight and easy easily spreadable. And they're formulated in a way that contains little to no fragrance, is non-comedogenic, and is also hypoallergenic. So that's just the broad understanding of what a gentle cleanser can be. Since gentle is what we're looking for in these cleansers, the chances are that the surfactants used will also be gentle. <laughs> yes. <Makes sense. laughs> surfactants are ingredients that help your cleansers foam up, and this is what allows the excess sebum and the dirt that's attached to the sebum them to be thoroughly washed off your face. And typically you'll find that regular cleansers will use sulfate-based surfactants like SLS, SLES to help the product foam up. So when it comes to looking for a gentler cleanser for your skin, they'll usually be a coconut-based surfactant to do the job in a much milder way. This is one way that a cleanser can leave the face not so taut after cleansing. Put the lime in the coconut. <laughs> Get on. Uh, drink it all up. Mix it all up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing to look out for is the pH level. Recently, a lot of brands are leaving the pH level of their products on the packaging, which makes it much easier to identify what it is. Yeah. To give a brief explanation, pH levels are what makes a product either acidic or more alkaline. And this ranges from zero to 14. <laughs> and different parts of our bodies will have different pH levels. Like our stomach acid is around two or 2.5, which makes it more acidic so that it can actually break down the foods that we eat. While our skin has a pH between 4.5 to about 5.5, which is still slightly on the acidic side and is constantly fluctuating when we use different types of water, when we use different skincare products in our routine. You'll find that cleansers will range from a pH level around five to six or nine. So if we were to find a cleanser that had a higher pH, these are usually the types that will leave our skin feeling a little drier and tighter after cleansing mm. because some skin types may need the extra power to cleanse highly, highly oily skin. Yeah. maybe me back in my teenage years, you'd want like a more uh, thorough cleanse. But as you age, because you lose more of that sebum production, you definitely want these like gentler, lower pH. So for gentle cleansers, the pH level is formulated close to your skin's normal pH level, 4.5 and 5.5. So when you use it, this translates to feeling more comfortable on the skin instead of feeling, you know, itchy, dry and tight after washing it. Next is fragrance. Some of you might be wondering, my cleanser says it's fragrance free, but I still smell something when I use it and see essential oils in the ingredients list. Isn't that super irritating and sensitizing to the skin? <laughs> Question mark. That's what a lot of you like to say, actually. Yes. So the answer is yes 
And no, because not everyone is irritated by essential oils. And some essential oils can be really beneficial for the skin. It just depends on what it is and how much of it is in the cleanser or the product. And how it's formulated. Yeah. So let's see why many brands, especially Korean skincare, chooses to use essential oils and whether it's actually the case that they are sensitizing. So the first thing to note is the product contains a very small percentage of these essential oils. According to the EU and Korean cosmetic regulations, essential oil concentrations in topical cosmetics must be used in a very low percentage. For cleansers, essential oils concentrations typically range around 0.01 to 0.1%, but brands can use up to 2% in a rinse off product. And that's why whenever we find essential oils in the ingredients list, they're located more towards the very bottom along with base or carrier oils that are higher up in the list for that diluting kind of process. The second thing is that essential oils might provide some benefit to the skin. We found two papers written in 2017 and 2018, which we'll link below for you guys if you want to do some reading, that explain essential oils are generally safe ingredients that can also offer antibacterial or antimicrobial qualities. And that's why usually you'll see them in more like acne kind of cleanses. Third, the reason they may be sensitizing is because it might not be fresh. The essential oil might not be fresh. Mm. And here's a catch. It's more likely to get irritated from products containing old, oxidized, or expressed essential oils. And expressed is just the process that creates a lot of different oils like citrus peel oil. It was even found through the 2018 paper that certain essential oils, especially those made through the express process, do carry a low to moderate risk of phototoxicity at most. Mm -hmm. So like with most debatable ingredients, it comes down to formulation. It might be a little bit hard because you don't know the actual like amount that's in it. Yeah. So what you can do is try it out. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And of course, these are only a few things that we found. But if you know that your skin absolutely cannot handle essential oils, you can continue to steer clear away from them. But generally, we want to make it a point to say that not everything should be viewed as something to avoid. Let's take a look at some ingredients you can look for in your cleansers for your skin type. Cleanser, 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 cleanser. And just remember, the perfect cleanser for you will come down to picking the consistency that you like, ingredients that work for you, and just personal preference. How cosmetically elegant you like your products. Yeah, just the overall like sensation. Texture, of it. feel, sensorial, buzzword, buzzword. <laughs> <laughs> So let's start with all skin types. Out of all of these products, I think we both feel like they're all very gentle. Yeah. But the most user-friendly, the most universal mm. cleansers that I think plays well with all skin types is the Fresh and the Then I Met You. Let's do this because we're so excited. This is actually the first skincare product I started using. Oh this specific cleanser. Oh my gosh, Jola. The, the scent reminds me, it takes me back to like early 20s. <laughs> and I was like, skincare, this world of skincare and products. This is great. It's just one of those cult favorites that have been around for the longest time. It's soy based and soy proteins are great for even like eyelashes for moisturizing, for nourishing the skin. And this one has a pH of 5.5, so it's very close to just your natural skin barrier, like pH level. Yeah. And in the soy proteins, there's also essential amino acids that our skin needs for healthy, radiant skin. And there's already like natural amino acids in our like sebum and things like that. So this just reinforces and further nourishes. There's also sunflower seed oil, which is non-comedogenic and super rich in antioxidants and can also calm your skin. There's also aloe leaf, juice, rose flower water, and cucumber extract, which gives it that very refreshing scent. The mix between rose and cucumber is like spa. Spa day. Yes! So when we were like in the bathtub, in the sink, we got so much of this onto our hands yes. and all over our face. Yeah. Like we had a full face of makeup on with mascara and everything, and it actually lightly takes off makeup as well without irritating the eyes. So it won't take off waterproof makeup, mm. but it will take off everything else. Yeah. So that's the Soy Fresh Cleanser. And then we have the Then I Met You. This is the Soothing Tea Cleansing Gel. So out of all of the cleansers that we're going to mention, this is the one that has 
PHJ, so like some sort of acid in it. So PHJ stands for polyhydroxy acid, and it does the same as the chemical exfoliants, just like way gentler. It helps to resurface dead skin cells to just make sure it's not like clunked and disgusting there. And the molecular weight is the largest. It doesn't irritate the skin as much because it yes. just stays on the surface. Yes. It's also got licorice root, green tea, rice ferment. Rice ferment, as you know, we both love. It's very soothing, it's very nourishing. And then licorice root is also great for general kind of brightening of the skin. If you have light hyperpigmentation, if you just want brightening. And you'll also find there's tea tree oil and scintilla asiatica in the ingredients as well. So overall, just a bunch of good ingredients. So the consistency of this one, I think is maybe the most unique that I've had or experienced in a cleanser because it's not a runny gel, but it's not it's, is it like Crave? Not as like jelly-ish. It's a little bit like more solid gel. Oh. Yeah. And it just looks like tea. So yeah, I'm almost done with this one. Very excited to share with you all because I loves it. And it's worth noting here that at the end of the day, if you want something to really help brighten your skin, you will want it in products that are gonna stay on. Yeah, like a serum. Yeah, serum or moisturizer. But if you have it in your cleanser, like it doesn't hurt. Okay, so what cleansers should you look for? for if you have dry skin. For gentle cleansers marketed towards dry skin types, you'll find that they contain more moisturizing ingredients that work to nourish your skin. So ingredients like hyaluronic acid, ceramides, glycerin, these are all great at retaining moisture in the skin after you cleanse. And texture-wise, you'll find more benefits from cleansers with creamy and even like whipped consistencies. But again, any skin type can use this, yes. right? But especially dry. My face loves the Ordinary Squalane Cleanser. Bing. Absolutely love it. This has a pH of 5.5 .5 to 6.5, and this cream to oil cleanser is great for leaving your skin super soft and super nourished without blocking your pores. Yeah, it is, seriously. It's so lightweight. It almost feels like after you cleaned your face, you didn't clean it, but it's yeah. like the cleaner version of yeah. the whole. <laughs> and I think squalane as an oil is already very, very lightweight. Mm -hmm. So squalane is the first ingredient in this cleanser, and there's also a lot of fatty alcohols and triglycerides that cleanse your skin free of dirt, excess oils, and even makeup. Makeup. We still recommend that you double cleanse with this. And another one that you've been really loving is the Rael. Yes, the Daily Detox Cleanser. This cleanser is a newcomer to our never-ending list of favorites, but it's a cleanser that we both really, really love. It's so fresh, like refreshing. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, it's the same reaction as Indie Lee. Yeah. You know, it's like, Oh my god. <laughs> Why did I just make a whip sound from water? Water on your face. <laughs> it's a jet. A <laughs> the product dispenses like an oil, but when you work it into a lather, the oil transforms into a lightweight foam texture that feels super airy on your face. And some key ingredients include olive oil, sodium hyaluronate, china bear leaf extract, as well as turmeric root and panthenol to retain hydration and brighten the skin. And for those who are wondering, china berry extract is one of the best ingredients for scavenging free radicals within the skin. So you're starting off the morning right on the right foot yes so i think dry skin in both of these there's a lot of oils yes but the thing with that is it it doesn't leave like that no oily there's no film, film or anything it just washes off really beautifully yeah yeah and as a little side note this cleanser does contain essential oils like mandarin orange peel oil as well as basil and lemonine but they are the last three ingredients showing up on the list thing to note even i use both of these Mm. Yeah, gentle cleansers for everyone! Yeah! <laughs> you get a gentle cleanser! <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about oily cleansers. Let's! For Felicia's tribe. <laughs> oh man. Actually, I've gotten less oily as I've aged, but you know, side note. Okay, so what cleansers should you look for? For oily skin types, you'll find that your face is kind of like this never ending grease ball because of your overactive sebaceous glands and it's just producing and producing throughout the day. And if you're in this category, you'll want to look for gel or even foaming type cleansers to wash away the excess oil and leave your skin feeling refreshed and also clean, but also not too gritty. Yes. Yeah. For ingredients, look for cleansers that contain hyaluronic acid, skin berry friendly oils like fatty alcohols and vitamin E, and even some gentle exfoliants such as lactic acid or PHA. Let's start off with some of my favorites. 
Um, just two. Yeah, just two <laughs> that we brought. An example of the foaming cleanser yeah. is the go-to skincare. Go to, ooh, yeah. yes. That one is very soothing, non-irritating, great for oily skin, you know, because people don't like foam a lot, but that one is really gentle. And we have a video dedicated to angry, pissed off skin yes. with Zoe. Yes. From GoTo. Make sure you watch that. There's a lot of interesting facts in that. But the ones that we have here are the Cosrx Low pH Good Morning Gel Cleanser, as well as the CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser. So first I'll talk about this because the only thing I brought back to Australia and used for a month was this. Oh. Yeah. And my mom, like she also just uses this. So we're just like using this all the time. <laughs> so what CeraVe does really well is that it's loaded with ceramides as well as hyaluronic acid. It's non-comedogenic, so great for oily skin and also it's fragrance free. And it's just very simple. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's one of those ones. Very basic, mm. but like good basic. And it's like this creamy texture that turns clear, like a very soft foam when it's massaged into the skin. So this is great for a second step yeah. of the double cleanse. Yeah, or like yeah. days that you just don't do anything. Morning time. And then this one is the Cosa Rex gel cleanser. And it's a clear based cleanser that doesn't really lather much. It's not like huge bubbles. A lot of people have said that this one is their holy grail and it's like featured in a lot of places. But actually when I used it for my oily skin, whatever it is in the formula or like other ingredients that are in it, it is a little more drying than like these other ones mm -hmm. that we've used. For your oily skin. Yeah, for my oily skin. So that's just something to note. It wasn't like totally drying or anything, but just a little bit more. But because it is like a very very highly sought after and so many of you guys love this as a holy grail product, we just wanted to mention it. Yeah. If you feel like you have combo skin, which we both do to certain extent. She's like dry combo, I'm oily combo. Yeah, like I'm very dry everywhere, but then my sebum is like, Pitter patter parting. Yeah. Like, it's so filled. So if you do have combo skin types, we would say, I love this way. Literally any of these work. Yeah. Because they do have the moisturizing qualities. Yeah. If you're oily in certain areas, crusty in other areas, it's just like hydrating, hydrating, hydrating. Yeah. And I think it's worth mentioning the oil. Oil with oil, it's extra helpful. Yeah. But even if you have dry skin, because squalane is so lightweight. And squalane is naturally made by yes. you, yourself, and you. <laughs> so with all of that being said, gentle cleansers are just gentle cleansers. <laughs> I think the way to know is you'll just know, like yeah. it will feel nice. Yes. It won't stand out that your skin is feeling anything out of the ordinary yeah. and you'll be able to typically use them day and night. Yeah. That's also coupled with like naturally occurring ingredients like the squalane, like ceramides that are already found in our skin. So it's not really doing anything more, but it's just kind of rebuilding what you already have yeah. to work with your skin. Yeah. That's probably a point, right? Working yeah. with and rather than like against and attacking yeah. you. And then also formulation and personal preference. So it all boils down to that. And just remember gentle is different for every skin type, depending on how you're feeling at that. Yeah, what you time. are sensitive to, what you aren't sensitive to, yeah. personal preference of texture, yes. smell, scents. And that's also not saying the ones we didn't mention aren't gentle. So make sure you leave your favorite gentle cleanser below, share with the community because we all love to find out what your favorites are. Yeah. <laughs> See you in the next episode. <laughs>